Well, good day, everybody. It's Benjamin Morgan, Chief Executive of the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association of Australia. And I have to apologise off the bat. If I'm sounding a little bit croaky this evening, it's I've been quite under the weather for the past week and a bit uh, struggling with uh, a flu. It's uh, not COVID. Uh, so uh, for those of you that are some of you out there probably hoping I got it and there's others that uh, would hate to hear that I've got it but I haven't got COVID I've been able to say clear of that but I've just had a, a hellishingly uh, bad flu that's kept me uh, at bay for the past week uh, obviously an issue that is on the top of everybody's minds right now is this uh, issue of pilot medical reform and in my last video I indicated to everybody that the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association was putting together a proposal document that you could use as a guide in your response uh, to the CASA public consultation uh, on this issue. And this evening, uh, we've been able to publish that document via both our Facebook social media uh, page and also on the homepage of the aopa.com.au uh, website. Uh, and the purpose of tonight's broadcast is to work our way through just a very brief conversation around what this medical proposal contains, exactly what we're seeking to achieve with this proposal, and of course, seeking your participation, uh, pilots, aircraft owners, aviation uh, industry participants right across the industry, uh, for you all to take part in this process by helping us drive this reform to completion. Now, I'd like to say from the outset of this, that this is an accommodation of five years of tireless advocacy. This has been and a, a monumental undertaking uh, to bring about pilot medical reform in this country for uh, the CASA RPL and the PPL community. And there's been a lot said on this subject uh, over the last five years, and I've written a mountain of words about it, and I've, I've expressed uh, an enormous degree of conversation on this topic, not only through these videos, but through meetings I've had with people at CASA and uh, other industry partners. But I'd like to I'd like to set a few things really straight with this uh, from the outset. Uh, there are certain people amongst the industry that are running around making the comment that the pilot medical review pursuit by AOPA was about putting RAOs out of business. Uh, that is just patently absurd. It is a ridiculous statement, and I, I just want to refute it a thousand percent right now for you all on camera and to make clear this is nothing it has nothing to do with the RAOs this is about pilot rights this is about ensuring that pilots right across this country regardless of which state and territory you take part in aviation that pilots are afforded equal and fair standing when it comes to their pilot medical certification now the reforms that aopa um, and our partners and we're not alone in this uh, pursuit for reform this particular um, uh, topic has been one that we've worked side by side with the sport aircraft association of australia and along with that we've also worked side and side with uh, the am rover and a number of other organizations uh, in trying to advocate for these essential reforms but what these reforms are about it's about moving Australia's aviation regulatory framework forward adopting proven and known medical certification standards that have been in use now around the world for quite some time and where there has been no adverse or negative impact on aviation safety system safety regulatory safety there's been no impact on pilot safety and in fact the data is showing that it's had a massive positive impact in helping kickstart general aviation, revitalise aviation and bringing thousands and thousands of pilots back into flying where these countries have adopted these standards. And of course, what we're really talking about is we're talking about the US FAA basic med and we're talking about the UK CAA's um, pilot medical declaration. Uh, and what we've tried to do with our reform document is to create a framework where we can explain to people what those standards are. And to do that, we have built a comparative table that you can simply look down along the table and you can see all the things between what we're proposing, uh, what uh, CASA are currently doing, what RAOs currently does, what GFA currently does, what the New Zealand regulators currently doing, and of course, the UK and the US examples. And so I'd like to take everyone just for a brief walk through this proposal. And then I'd like to talk to you about what you can be doing as a pilot 
uh, here within the industry to help us drive this uh, to change. And just a quick message here from Andrew uh, Whiteman. Hopefully the change in government doesn't affect all the hard work. Um, I guess I should maybe just touch on that very quickly. Look, guys, we, you know, I was straight off the cab today to uh, issue a written congratulations to uh, Prime, uh, Prime Minister-elect Anthony Albanese and the Labor Party. Um, they've obviously now found themselves well and truly into government uh, and will be working with them. And I think that something that hopefully I've communicated over the five years or, or five and a half years that I've been with AOPA now is that we will work with politicians on all sides uh, of the aisle to ensure that the advocacy agenda is both understood and is being actioned. So we're looking forward to working with um, uh, Prime Minister Albanese and whomever will be appointed uh, as the final cabinet members in his first cabinet. Um, Catherine King, MPs, currently the shadow, well, was the shadow minister for infrastructure. We're uncertain whether she will continue in that role. She may be replaced, where, where you're gonna be waiting to find out. But uh, another small advantage I have is that Anthony, or well, Prime Minister Albanese is actually my local member here in Graindler. Uh, and so uh, I have quite often caught up uh, with his team and I'll be looking forward to reaching out again. So Andrew, thank you for that. Okay, without delay, let's, uh, let's pop up on screen the uh, the information here that I've got. I'll see if it, yep, here we go. That's working great. Okay, so this is the uh, recreational and private pilot medical certification reform proposal for 2022. And you'll note something here is that it, it says Australian General Aviation Alliance. Uh, and the three founding partners of the AGAA are AOPA, Sport Aircraft Association of Australia, and AMROBA, which is the Aircraft Maintenance Repair Overhaul Business Association. And um, as you dive into the document, you see we have a table of contents that lays out everything nice and neatly. Uh, and the first page, we have a little bit about the AGAA. Not, ma not many people would know this. Uh, and in fact, it reminds me of a comment from Don Ramsey on one of the recreational um, Facebook groups uh, this weekend in which uh, Don was indicating that uh, he was of the opinion that AOPA hasn't been working with the rest of the industry. Well, uh, AOPA... Uh, back in 2017, 2018, we envis envisioned the creation of an alliance by bringing together all of the industry bodies to work together on sensible reform. And when the AGAA was brought together, we inducted a whole range of member organisations, and you can see them all listed out here. Uh, I won't go through all of them, but uh, suffice to say, the AGAA is in fact the largest general aviation alliance of its kind in Australia, and that was put together, motivated by AOPA and with the assistance of the Sport Aircraft Association uh, and AMROBA. And we are working hand in hand with organisations in making sure that uh, key reforms that will benefit each of these organisations and help unlock the potential of aviation are being carried forward. So if you're out there in the industry and you're of the view that AOPA is not working with other industry bodies or you're being told that we're not working, that's just, yeah, it's a bunkum, it's a load of crap. Uh, we're working with everybody. Uh, there are certain organisations, there's a very large recreational organisation which is absent here, uh, and they have been invited on numerous occasions to come and take part. And actually, I, I wanna, I'm going to go straight into camera, I want to make this clear. From the outset of the development of this proposal, we approached RAOs at the start of this and we issued them a direct and personal invitation to work with AOPA and the AGAA in developing this proposal. We made clear to them that we wanted to work collectively as an industry to come up with a unified proposal that had the best possible chance of being delivered back to government. And we were basically told, no thanks piss off. Uh, and so I think it's a great shame that they're not participating in this process. I think they should have participated in the process. They've made their own decisions with that. Um, but for those of you out there that might be peddling this view that we have done this without them or we, we have left them out, that's just a load of crap. They were invited to the table on this. We encouraged it as much as we could. We were told thanks, but no thanks. And I guess you can only lead the, the horse so far, you can't force it to drink. So uh, that should answer uh, anyone that wants to bring up that issue. Uh, something of particular interest to CASA and government, the AGAA partnership represents 25,000 direct individuals, members and persons in the general aviation industry here in Australia. Uh, I'm not sure of any other group that has uh, this type of coverage, but um, you know, suffice to say AGAA is, is quite literally the largest representative organisation. So we've prepared the proposal and that's this proposal has been put before the AGAA members. We've asked each of the AGAA members who uh, endorsed this report uh, or this proposal, sorry, to draft up a cover letter 
and that cover letter will be signed off by their associations indicating that they're in full support of it. Uh, and we will be providing those letters along with this proposal to, uh, to CASA, but also it'll be provided to all of our elected officials uh, and members of government uh, to indicate that the industry is well and truly behind uh, this reform. And so this page, the purpose of this page is to outline that there's a broad consideration uh, for uh, the entirety of our industry in thinking about this proposal. All right, so let's hit it. Uh, the Australian General Aviation Alliance is seeking the introduction of a new self-declaration pilot medical certification standard, which we detail in Table 1, uh, for recreational pilot licence and private pilot licence holders. Along with this, we would like to see key reforms to exist to the existing Civil Aviation Safety Authority Class 2 BASIC and the Class 2 certification standards so that we can unlock general aviation participation and growth. So underpinning this, the reforms that we are seeking have been implemented by aviation safety regulators in the United States of America and in the United Kingdom. And across the past five years, these have proven to be both a safe method of pilot medical certification uh, and one that have benefited industry. Both regulators base their reforms on the use of conditional private vehicle motor car licensed medical standards. What does that mean? In Australia, we have this standard called OSROADS. So the equivalent in Australia would be the private OSROADS, a conditional private OSROADS standard. And of course, both the UK and the US provide uh, options for both a self-declaration and a GP assessed medical certification standard. Uh, in the United States, the FAA basic med pilot med certification is widely regarded now as one of the most successful aviation regulatory reforms in modern history. And there are now a plethora of examples of senators and Congress, uh, congressmen and women who have stood before government in the United States and commended the FAA uh, for what they've done in unlocking general aviation and producing a safe standard that deregulated, removed red tape, removed unnecessary costs and advanced aviation. And of course, the UK reforms mirror what has happened in the US as well. Their pilot medical declaration system has been a huge advancement and was part of a, or a continuing program by the UK CAA to remove what they call their, their gold uh, plating. And so the UK government decided in the United Kingdom that the regulations um, the regulations were just too onerous that the CAA had tried to apply the simply the extremely highest standards uh, and they were not necessarily standards that were best for industry and best uh, for moving the aviation economy forward and so they've got a gold plating removal program uh, and these medical reform uh, activities were part of that so they've been again they've been accoladed. So in summary, recreational and private pilots in both the US and the UK who use either a self-deck or a general practitioner assessed medical uh, have been provided a medical around the following fundamentals. A, that the pilot meets the medical fitness requirements of a conditional private motor vehicle license standard. B, that can fly both single and multi-engine aircraft. So they, they don't limit um, the aircraft type. So you can fly both multi-engine and you can fly single engine. Uh, C, you can fly an aircraft that weighs up to 5,700 kilograms. So again, it, they, they don't limit you uh, on a self-declared medical to fly exclusively a light sport type aircraft. And the, the weight really has nothing to do with your fitness to fly. And they understand that. Uh, D, can participate in both VFR and IFR operations. And this is a critical, a critical understanding is that again, uh, those that fly IFR will attest to this. IFR is in fact safer than flying VFR because you do not have the weather workloads that you have when you're flying VFR. And, and of course you have ATC uh, there to assist you at all times. And so again, we wanna see people being able to use those licenses and we want safety to improve in the industry by people investing in upgrading those uh, license provisions. Okay, E can carry up to a maximum of six passengers. And so uh, the, the UK um, pilot medical declaration will allow you to carry three passengers and one pilot, so that's four. In the US system, you can carry five plus one, that's six. And of course, something that's of great interest to a lot of people across Australia has been a huge criticism of the basic class two system to date has been the fact that in Australia, we've been prohibited from flying aerobatics. And in fact, in the US and the UK on whether you're flying self-declaration or a GP assessed medical, you can fly aerobatics. And so we would like to see A, B, C, D, E and F be implemented as the cornerstone uh, of medical reform. 
Okay, so US has in excess of 66,000 pilots that are now flying on basic med alone. Uh, the numbers in Australia are around about 35,000 pilots, so twice as many pilots effectively in the United States alone flying on basic med than what we have in total numbers of pilots here in Australia. So in terms of the data set to assess the suitability and the safety of these reforms, the sample size in the US is so large that Australia, the Australian regulator really um, has no reason uh, not to move forward on these uh, on these kinds of reforms. And just a reminder that the pilots that are operating on basic med are flying on VFR and IFR, and they fly a range of aircraft ranging from uh, hot air balloons, recreational light sport, experimental amateur built, uh, general aviation certified singles and twins, uh, piston turboprops, uh, helicopters, gyrocopters, warbirds, gliders, and more and so it's a great reform and one that australia really needs to be aspiring to follow it's, it would unlock general aviation like no man's business okay agaa regards both the introduction of a new self-declaration standard and reform of the casa basic class 2 standard as a powerful gateway uh, to unlock our industry into it and to drive sustainability we believe that the reductions it would make in regulatory burdens and costs uh, imposed on general aviation would be profound. And so uh, we believe that such a reform would make aviation more accessible. We believe it would make aviation stronger. And we believe that the benefits to pilots and aviation users uh, would be felt uh, quite strongly by those throughout regional Australia. And there's some really fundamentally simple explanations there. And that is the current AVMED system, which we all know is not working, we don't have anywhere near enough damies. We don't have them in locations where they're accessible. I mean, AOPA for years, we've been getting the feedback from members that they can't access a DAME out in regional Australia. And that many people have got to jump in a car and drive five hours to get somewhere to see a doctor. I mean, this is just a nonsense. This is 2022. The world has reformed. Uh, leading aviation nations have shown that this can be done safely and it's a proven methodology of medical certification. So, you know, if you think about it, if you're located out in regional Australia and you you have got the ability to self-certify, self-declare your medical, or you've got the ability just to duck down to the GP uh, and you can get flying and you can fly VFR, IFR, you can fly your 182 with your three passengers in it and get in and out of controlled airspace because, face it, you're a PPL licensed pilot. You're trained to the, the world's highest private standard. Why shouldn't you uh, be permitted to exercise your, your license uh, on such a medical. So it, it, all the data is in favour of this, and I believe it's such a good time for it. Okay, so importantly, we see the introduction of the new self-declaration medical certs and reforms to basic class two would importantly deliver safe deregulation. And this is a key point, is that deregulation is actually a commitment that the Australian Commonwealth has made. There is a framework about reducing red tape right across government and we would see that this is a great opportunity for CASA to be able to deregulate and to remove red tape uh, and in doing so aligning itself closely with the minister's statement of expectations um, which were set uh, for CASA just recently uh, and I could sit here for 20 minutes and I could talk through how it aligns with all of that but I believe the summary uh, really um, it, it, it stands instead, uh, and I don't believe that CASA really have a strong argument anymore to continue to refuse these uh, these reforms, given that they have been so successful and have demonstrated themselves to be so safe in both the UK and the US examples. Okay, we've got a couple of comments we'll just quickly throw up on screen. Uh, one from Clinton, he says, recent steps taken by AVMED to return to the dark ages on pilot colour vision deficiency sadly demonstrate that CASA has reverted to type, unwilling or unable to make decisions on the basis of objective evidence or objective risk. Well, you know, Clinton, you and I both agree uh, what has happened on the um, colour vision deficiency side is nothing short of shameful. I've actually been approached now by uh, two pilots who are seeking assistance from AOPA on this particular issue, uh, and I have uh, have readied an email to Kate Manderson this week, which I'll be sending out. But uh, again, uh, CASA did make a commitment to commit to those reform practices which uh, New Zealand had implemented. Something has gone awry here and suddenly CASA are taking a sidestep from it. So we do need to get to the bottom of it and we do need to advocate to fix it. Uh, another quick one from Andrew says, how many have given it away because the hoops of CASA AVMED made them jump through despite being overall fit to fiddle? This is absolutely groundbreaking, catapult GA back into being. Well, mate, that's exactly what it's all about. This is about unlocking our general aviation industry and moving things forward. Uh, and we've been committed to it. You know, like we have waded through waist deep crap for five years. 
uh, on this reform and we've pushed against the objections of certain self-administrations and others who've had vested interests and horses of self-interest running in the race. But I, I've always believed that, you know, time would pass and you would get to a point where the argument becomes glaringly obvious that we have to change. And I think we're at that point now. Okay, so table one, and again, guys, um, I'll put up the link in a second where you can download this, or if you just jump on the AOPA Australia Facebook page, or if you go to our homepage, you can download this document. I'm uncertain as to how clear you're going to be able to see uh, the tables because they're pretty tight given the, the quantity of the data we had to fit in. But basically, these are the two medical standards we are seeking to be introduced in parallel. So we're not asking for one medical standard, we're asking for two things to take place. The first thing is we would like to see a self-declared, self-certified, self-declared, self-assessed medical standard introduced that follows along the UK CAA's uh, pilot medical declaration standard. And it would enable private operations, it would enable VFR, IFR, this includes your night VFR, uh, it will include single and multi-engine operation and will include the ability to fly piston and turbine aircraft, remembering there is a lot of great new small turboprop aeroplanes that are all on the way in. Why would we want a medical standard that stops us operating these very genuinely private general aviation aeroplanes that, that fit this bracket? Uh, the self-declared medical that we're proposing would enable you to have a pilot and up to three passengers, so four people in the aircraft. Uh, it's up to 5,700 kilograms uh, uh, MTO for the aeroplane. It will allow you into controlled airspace, of course, because you're licensed to the world's highest private standard. There should be no reason why suitably trained pilots are, are not permitted from accessing airspace. Um, you will not require, under our proposal, you're not required to go get a GP assessment or, an, or a DAME assessment. This is a self-declaration. Fill out a form, submit it to CASA, go flying. Okay, validity period. If you're under 70, it's indefinite. From the age of 70 and above, we put a three-year moratorium on it, and then you have to go and get a GP checkup. And we think that everyone would agree that beyond the age of 70, a GP checkup at least is going to be a healthy option for you there. And that does align with what is done in both in the US and also what is done in the UK. Importantly, the medical requirement is that you are, uh, you are able to hold a valid private driver's license and meet the medical fitness requirements of the conditional Osroads private driver's license standard. That is the key. This is the absolute key and it's the central argument to effective pilot medical reform is that if we use the condition, uh, unconditional Osroads commercial standard, this is a waste of time. And CASA, you would be wasting your time even trying to talk about a reform that uses that standard. We need to align to the same private standards the rest of the world has adopted and it has proven to be safe, it has proven to be reliable and there has been no adverse impact on aviation safety and there has been no negative impact uh, on, uh, on the, the safety of pilots flying in the United States. Uh, briefing requirements, none. You should not have to give your passengers in the aeroplane a briefing to say that I'm not operating on some kind of proven and known medical standard. Why? Because there's five years of international data to prove that the standard is safe. And if CASA approves it, we shouldn't have to give some onerous briefing to passengers just to scare them for the sake of it. Okay, altitude limitations. There should be no altitude limitations, which I think makes sense. And yes, you should be able to conduct aerobatics. And so that's what we see happening uh, on a self-declared uh, pilot medical reform. And that follows the UK CAA model. And you know, I've been told by CASA time and time again, we can't just adopt the US system because we're a Commonwealth country and our legal systems are different. Well, guys, we certainly have to be able to look to the UK, uh, the mothership England, where we've based our entire government and legal system on it and adopt something that they've been able to do. So I really am looking forward to seeing Cassie get this done because I think for the first time they actually have all the evidence around them. They have all the documentation that shows that there is no objection to doing this. Okay, second part of our proposal is the, uh, I guess, the reform of the basic class two to bring it more in line with what the US basic med system is. So from the top, it would be private operation, VFR and IFR, including nighttime VFR, single and multi, piston and turbine, pilot plus five passengers, so a total of six in the airplane, aircraft up to 5,700 kilograms. Again, no limitation there. there. I mean, in the US, you can jump on basic med and you can actually climb in a King Air and go flying. Um, and it's safe. 
and it's proven to be safe. And there's five years of data now that says that there is no adverse negative impact on aviation system safety. So the data is in our favour there. Controlled airspace access, uh, it is a GP or it is a DAME examination in Australia, either or. Uh, valid for four years uh, based on a private driver's licence. You don't need to hold and this is a distinction on the self-certification, we are saying you must hold a private driver's license to prove you're medically fit. Uh, on the uh, basic class two reform, we're simply saying that you would need to meet the medical fitness requirements to hold a conditional Osroads private motor, uh, private driver's license, um, sorry, to hold a private driver's license to that Osroads conditional standard. Uh, which I think everyone would understand. Okay, now again, no briefing requirements, no altitude limitations, aerobatics included. These two reforms are your US basic med and your UK pilot medical declaration, self-certification, self-declaration system. Both have been in use for five years. Neither have produced a negative or detrimental impact on aviation system safety, on pilot safety. The data shows that both are resulting in more pilots returning to aviation. It's increasing aviation activity. It's re-injecting life. Uh, and it's making sustainability of general aviation stronger. So both reforms are based on proven and safe reform. Now, if we go further into the document that we've prepared, we have a table that compares the um, the class four and the class five proposals by AOPA and then stacks it up against where RAOs are at, where the gliding federation is at and where your, CAS, your existing CASA class two basic is and where your CASA class two system is on the far side. So this is a great comparative table just to show you how everything stacks up in respect of that. The next table I've included is to put together an assessment of how the AOPA proposal stacks up against the RAOS system, the Gliding Australia system, the CASA Class 2 Basic, the CASA Class 2, the New Zealand DL9. And, and let me just say, guys, a lot of people saying, oh, let's adopt the New Zealand system. You don't want the New Zealand system. The New Zealand uh, DL9 medical is nowhere near as practical and as useful as the UK PMD or the US Basic Med. Even the New Zealanders didn't get it right this time. So, you know, Again, you'll, you can see on the comparative table, we get into the orange section, you'll have the UK LAPL, which is the Light Aircraft Pilot Licensed Medical. Uh, you've got the um, Pilot Medical Declaration, which is the self-certified medical. Then you've got the US Sport Pilot or Light Sport uh, uh, Medical. And then you've got the US Basic Med. And I encourage you all just to download the table, have a read through it. It becomes entirely self-evident uh, as to what it's about, how it's about, so on and so forth. Okay, so now we get to the crux of what this proposal is about. So CASA have opened up for public consultation. I might just quickly get back to Cameron here. CASA have opened up for public consultation and they're seeking feedback from the industry on what they should do and how they should do it. Now, uh, we've taken some time to have a good look through uh, that medical questionnaire and to look at the types of questions that they're asking you. And it really does appear that there's quite a few gotchas in this. They're trying to get, they're trying to evoke an answer out of the industry that allows them to justify that, you know, oh, well, industry sees there's risks. We've got to be very careful as an industry how we respond to this medical questionnaire because it'll be used against us. And we've seen it happen time and time and time again. So what we've done for everybody is uh, we've gone through and we've produced uh, a guide that shows each of the questions and what our answer is. And you can see, so this component here in the blue is the answer. And what you'll be able to do is you can go through and you can read each of the questions and you can read each of the answers and you can cut and you can paste those answers yourself into that questionnaire. And the purpose of being able to do that is so that number one, uh, the CASA survey by quantum of response uh, will show a clear weight of support for exactly what we're seeking to achieve. Uh, number two, it will ensure that there are no red herrings that take the, the consultative process sideways and create further unnecessary, unnecessary delays, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, at the back of the document, I've included some source links. Uh, so if anyone were questioning any of the data points, uh, you can go through and you can click on these and you can extrapolate any other further information. I mean, for example, if you wanted to know 
what the um, pilot and physician guidelines were. Why is that not working? My luck. I don't think it's going to click for me. Um, if you wanted to know what those guidelines were, uh, if I just copy that, whack that in there, you can click on the, each of these documents uh, and you can review it. And AOPA in the United States has produced some amazing material that goes through and spells out all of the uh, options and all of the information on how basic med works, what the qualifying uh, medical conditions, what the disqualifying medical conditions, what your practical use of your uh, medical is, et cetera, et cetera. And I, again, I do recommend if you're if you're taking a look at any of this, uh, take a take a good look through it, um, and uh, and I guess uh, learn as much as you can learn from the process. Okay, so here is the front page of the AOPA website. You can see Pilot Medical Review Proposal 2022. If you click on that, it loads up and you can see under the first paragraph, you can click and you can download a copy of the proposal. You can see there it goes, it downloads it. So that's accessible there. It's also on our Facebook page. So if you go to the AOPA Facebook page, uh, you'll see the post I've put out and it also has a link where you can download uh, the report. I will put a post up uh, very shortly uh, that has a guideline of what we're seeking from the industry to assist us. Now, uh, I've already been called by a number of aero clubs from around the country who've said, Ben, we want to support AOPA in the push for this med reform. This makes a lot of sense. We've got to get this done. What can we do? Well, there's two things that everybody can do. The first thing is you can jump online to the CASA public consult um, page. And again, I'll have that information up on the website and the social media for you. And you can fill out the questionnaire by cutting, copying and pasting the answers that we've produced straight in uh, to that, uh, to that uh, survey. The second thing that you can do is I would encourage every individual pilot to write a letter to AOPA Australia endorsing the proposal. It's just something as simple as, my name is Benjamin Morgan. I am a pilot flying in the CASA system. I fully endorse the AOPA Recreational and Private Pilot Medical Reform Proposal 2022, and I'm encouraging CASA to adopt uh, in full without delay. Signed, my name, my contact telephone number, and my address. Uh, send us a copy of that letter, which you can email through to me. I can put my email address up on screen right now for you. Um, send it through to ben.morgan at aopa.com.au. And what we will do is when we package up the proposal, which we will send to CASA external to the questionnaire, we will make a formal submission of the document proposal. That submission will be complemented by all of the letters which individually endorse that proposal. So not only will it have the covering letters that are endorsements by the AGAA partners, it will also include then all of those individual letters from each and every one of you that take the time to make that submission. And that is important for two reasons. Not only are we going to send that proposal to the Civil Aviation Safety Authority, I will see to it that every single member of parliament receives that proposal uh, and that they receive a further document outlining that we're five years now behind the rest of the world and that we need to get on with getting this reform completed. So uh, this is an opportunity for each and every one of you just to do a little. Um, I've put in five years on it. You can put in uh, 20 minutes uh, and and take care of that survey and take care of a letter and help us get it across the line because it is a reform that is going to help so many people across the general aviation industry and it will most certainly unlock uh, general aviation activity and it's going to create some great opportunities for flying schools. It's going to create enormous opportunities for general aviation businesses. It'll create great opportunities for aircraft sales um, on both importing of aeroplanes and selling of aeroplanes locally. Uh, this is good for Australian avi aviation. But do you know who the biggest winners? The biggest winners in this is not just general aviation. It's going to be the 10,000 members of RAOs because if we can get this done and we can get a self-declared medical standard in implemented for general aviation, <clears throat> there are 10,000 members of RAOs that will suddenly be able to self declare their medical fitness and upgrade their licenses from an RPC to an RPL and to a PPL and start flying within the general aviation system with no 
barrier and no hurdles in front of them. Uh, and I, again, I would just come back and I would say that I know that I've copped a lot of flack for five years for pushing for this reform. Uh, and there is no question that this reform is not a reform that our friends within self-administration wanted to see happen. Um, it's not in their financial interest to see this type of reform take place. And that's speaking openly and honestly about it. And I had a debate with someone on the weekend where I said, I'm sorry, but I, I'm going to talk about it publicly. I, I don't have a dog in the race, and I think we just need to be honest about it. Uh, it's a reform that's not in their interests, uh, but it is in the interests of the 10,000 members within their uh, membership that want to be able to expand their flying and go beyond uh, where they're at today. And I think long term, uh, in the years to come, when we look back at all of this, I'm positive that history will look at us very favourably. And, uh, you know, many people will be then saying, hey, that was absolutely worthwhile doing because it was a moment in time in which general aviation was saved from destruction. Uh, and it was a moment in time in which we brought a lot of life back into general aviation uh, but more importantly, I think we can grow the entire aviation industry as a whole, which makes it more beneficial, not just for GA, but it'll make it beneficial in the long run for those within the RAA as well. So um, we, we are going to keep our eye on the long term prize. Um, this is a safe and sensible reform that is long overdue. I uh, met recently on uh, last week, I met with uh, the chair of CASA. Um, Mark Binskin and uh, Pip Spence, who's the DAS and their executive team. Uh, I won't go through the details of the meeting other than to say that I was um, suitably uh, satisfied that CASA understand the argument that we've been making. They understand the need for key reform and change. There is still a debate as to how we get some of that reform done. Uh, that's always going to exist. That's just that's just the game. Um, but they really do appear at this stage to understand that there is a urgency to getting some of this stuff done. And I think that this is a great starting point for CASA. I think CASA have a, a wonderful opportunity in front of them right now to get this self declaration medical reform and to get uh, the basic class two fixed so it's practical and useful for industry. I am optimistic that they will carry this through. Uh, and I think that if we can get enough of us across the industry um, that are supportive of it and are willing to put our time into just those few extra steps to show that this is something we really need to see happen, then I think we can carry the day. So uh, that's where we're at with pilot medical uh, reform here in Australia. Uh, IOPA is incredibly proud of the work that we and the SAAA and AMROVA and our AGAA partners have done. Uh, I want to extend a huge Thank you to Tony White and his team who've stuck by uh, AOPA through this journey and have been an absolute rock for us uh, to be able to be supported um, in a reform that has not been well received by certain groups. Um, but they've stood with us as, as Ken Kinane and his AMROBA team uh, and others. And I think that uh, this is how you get stuff done. You've got to work together. Uh, you've got to bring people to the table and um, and to make this stuff happen. And I think that's what we do at AOPA. We are, as one person said, you're aggressive, you're loud, I don't like you. Okay, I'm aggressive and I'm loud. Um, but if it means we can bring these kinds of reforms to the table and we can get them done, I think we could all agree that maybe it's uh, what we've needed for a period in time to, to see it happen. So, guys, uh, thank you so much for joining me tonight. And for those of you that will get the opportunity to see this, um, recording uh, when you play it back. I do thank each and every one of you uh, for your support. And I thank everyone uh, who jumps in and writes letters in advance for that support as well. I look forward to seeing them come through. And uh, if you do have any other questions uh, or anything in relation to medical reform that you would like to see uh, done, please don't hesitate. Send me an email or pick up, uh, you know, can pick up the telephone uh, and you can call me as well. My mobile phone number is out there everywhere. It's 0415 4 I'm always happy to have a chat with anyone from across the aviation industry. My phone's always uh, always on. Uh, don't hesitate to give me a call. I'm always usually working pretty late. So if you would like to get me, night times are a great time as well. Uh, so with that, thank you so much, guys. I look forward to seeing your responses in. A couple of quick comments maybe before I finish. Gary, there are a lot of unnecessary expenses in GA. Casa Medicals and ASIC cards are two of them. Good on you, Mr. Morgan. Well, thank you, Gary. <laughs> uh, 
we can knock over medicals, I can start to get a bit more time and start targeting those ASIC cards. And, you know, crazily, we can fix the ASIC card issue. It's the ASIC card problem for us in general aviation simply stems to one really silly line in the Transport Security Act. And if we could fix just that one line, we would fix the issue. But uh, with a change of government, there's obviously going to be a, a new Minister for Home Affairs. We need to start that process again and uh, see if we can make some headway. And just one from down in Tassie, Ian Tugger, it's always great to hear from you. Thanks for all the work you and your team have done to put this together. All pilots now need to support with individual letters. Thank you, Ian. Thank you for the support and uh, for calling out the, uh, the support of other pilots. So thank you very much, guys. Ben Morgan from AOPA, and I'll see you all again